Hi, Paul here from Easy Composites. In a previous video, I showed you just how easy it is to make genuine, high-performance forged carbon fiber parts that would be suitable for mechanically stressed applications. The purpose of this video is to test parts that have been made with this process to destruction to get their mechanical properties and make some good comparisons against some alternative materials. So we'll be testing two different types of forged carbon fiber against two different types of directly 3D printed carbon fiber, and then finally comparing all of these to aluminium. So the first set of specimens that we have here have been made with the exact process that we showed in the previous video. So we've taken a 3D printed mold, loaded it with chopped toe and resin, and then compression molded it at room temperature to form these components. The next set has been made with almost exactly the same process, but instead of just using chopped toe, we have continuous fiber placed where we need the strength. So we have long continuous toes of carbon running down the blade and around the pivot point here. And what this does is it puts the strength exactly where we need it. With a normal or conventional forge part, you've got the fibers randomly oriented inside the mold. And this means that the strength runs equally in all directions, making it fairly isotropic. But in putting these long continuous toes in there, it puts the strength just where we need it. So I do expect this to perform slightly better than a normal forge component. These forge parts have been made in molds that have been 3D printed, but of course it is possible to directly 3D print with carbon fiber. The most common way of doing that is to use a filament that has a milled carbon fiber filler in there. Typically these are very short strands of around about 30 microns in length, and these just add additional strength and stiffness to the polymer that you're printing with. The parts have been printed at 100% fill, so this is about as strong as you could get from a conventional form of 3D printing. The next set of parts that we have here have been made with Mark Forge continuous fiber placement. Now this is quite a lot different to conventional 3D printing in that the filament is a continuous strand of carbon fiber which has got the nylon resin matrix on here. So it's extruded in a similar way and then cut at the end of every path. But what this allows you to do is place directional or anisotropic reinforcement. So we have fibers running down the length of the blade and around the pivot point here to put the strength where we need it. Now, these particular parts have all been printed with 100% fill, and we've used as much fiber as we possibly can to make them perform as well as you could get from a 3D printer. Now, Mark Forge claimed that these could perform as well as 6061T6 aluminium. Now, they do feel very strong, and I'm particularly interested in seeing how they hold up. And then finally, we have our aluminium components. So this is a cast aluminium lever. I don't know the alloy that it's made from, but it's likely to be reasonably good as it is intended for a trials motorcycle. Then we have our tensile and flexural tokens, and these have been machined from 6082T6 aluminium. So let's get these loaded into the machine and start gathering some data. So the first test that we're going to do is a tensile test. And in principle, this is really simple. We just load our specimen in between the jaws here, clamp down on it, and then pull on the sample until it breaks. All the time, we're going to be recording the amount that the sample's being stretched and also the load that's going through it. The first on test is the aluminium. As the sample is put under load, it stretches. This is shown as percentage elongation along the bottom axis. So the less it stretches for a given load, the steeper the line will be, and therefore the stiffer the material is. Whilst this line is running fairly straight, we're in elastic deformation, meaning that upon removal of the load, it would return to its original shape undamaged. As soon as we get to this point, the line begins to level out, and now we're getting into plastic deformation. So we're now permanently stretching the material. This is known as the yield point, and for most purposes, this is regarded as a failure point. The aluminium then continues to stretch until it reaches its ultimate tensile strength and breaks. Next up, we have the conventional forged carbon fiber. By the shallower angle that we see here, we can immediately identify that this material is not as stiff as the aluminium that we previously tested. The yield point of this material is very close to its ultimate tensile strength, and we don't really have any plastic deformation stage, but it does fail sooner, with a yield of around a third lower than the aluminium. Now we have the optimized forged material, which is essentially a continuous unidirectional carbon token. The steepness of the graph tells us that we have a similar stiffness or Young's modulus to the aluminium, but now, as we are seeing, the strength is far greater than in the previous tests. This is the Mark Forge continuous carbon fiber 3D print. 
And although the stiffness is lower than the other materials tested, it does still show very high strength and fails a similar amount of force as the aluminium. Finally, we have the Onyx carbon-filled 3D print. As you can see, the performance we're seeing is significantly lower than the other materials. So whilst this is slowly stretching in the background, let's talk some more about the test itself. Firstly, there is no single test method that is well suited to all of these materials. But rather than using separate test conditions for each material type, I've used a common method for all samples to make following and understanding this comparison easier. Normally, in materials testing, you would use units of pressure like megapascals for the stress, but I've converted this into kilograms force on this specimen with a cross section of 10 millimeters by three millimeters. I thought that for people new to the subject, this would be more relatable. If you're not new to it, then you will of course know that a megapascal is equal to one Newton over one square millimeter. So converting this scale to megapascals is easily done. The next test that we're going to do is a three-point bend test. So we've got a span here of 40 millimeters, and we're just going to load our specimen into there and then press down on it. Again, recording the load that's going through the machine and the amount that it's traveled. The specimens tested all measure 15 by four millimeters in cross section. The aluminum behaves as we would expect and yields, plastically deforms and then permanently deforms but doesn't actually come to final breakage at the end due to the test method. But you can clearly identify the yield failure point. Now we have the forged carbon fiber and this showed good stiffness and very good strength with a yield significantly higher than aluminum. This would have been even more impressive if the weight was factored as it is almost half of the weight. Like in the previous test, the optimized version of the forged carbon shows the highest strength and stiffness, perhaps unsurprising due to the unidirectional nature of the material. Then we have the Mark Forge Continuous Fiber 3D Print. In this test, it showed significantly lower stiffness than the other materials, but still had a very good yield strength, showing that it could certainly be used for structural components. Finally, we have the Onyx carbon-filled nylon, which only just scrapes in at the bottom of the chart. The next test that I've got set up here is one that's been designed to simulate the sorts of loads and conditions that the levers would encounter in the real world. So in the bottom of the machine, I've made this fixture to mount the lever on the pivot point, and then the head of the machine will drop down onto that, actuating the lever in a similar way to how a finger would. The results from this test quite closely follow the trend of the previous flexural test. So whilst these run through, let's discuss some of the limitation of forged carbon that might not be apparent from the test that we've conducted. Firstly, abrasion resistance. Carbon will wear and abrade more quickly than metals would, meaning that any bearing surfaces would need to be lined. Typically, this would be done with seal bearing units or bushes like in the case of these levers. It's also not particularly good at holding threads. You would get away with drilling and tapping it for non-critical purposes, but for anything else, the threads would require the use of a metal insert. Another limitation is temperature tolerance. A forged carbon component will only tolerate the maximum working temperature of the resin system used. So for a higher temperature application, you would need to use a higher temperature capable resin, such as REL 160. But even then, you'll never match the temperature capability that you could achieve using metals. With the mechanical testing done, let's now try and draw some conclusions. Starting out with the lever pull test, because I think this is the most relatable, we'll look first at the aluminium lever. I'm sure many of you will have an instinct for how aluminium performs, but this one began to yield or to permanently bend with 98 kilograms of force applied. If we then look at our forged carbon lever, which is the one that's been made with the exact same process we showed in a previous video, this failed at a much higher level with a very impressive 153 kilograms of force before it began to fracture. 
Then we have our optimized forged. So this has been made with the exact same process, but we've added the continuous fibers in the areas that we want the strength. And this did improve the strength of the lever. And this one failed a staggering 203 kilograms of force. So in this test, both of these forged carbon levers do outperform the aluminium one. And that is just on a size for size basis. It doesn't take into account the fact that the forged carbon weighs around about half of the weight. So if you were to replace an aluminium component with a forged one like this, you would not only be increasing its strength, but you'd be doing that at half of the weight. So the next one that we're going to look at is the Mark Forged Continuous Fibre Placement. So this has continuous toes of carbon placed where it needs the strength. And I have to say the performance that it's offered was pretty impressive and it didn't fail until 85 kilograms of load, which is surprisingly close to the performance of aluminium. So I can certainly see why Mark Forge make that comparison. What I will say though, is it isn't the stiffest material on test. I took a deflection reading once 10 kilograms of force had been applied, which is about equivalent to a firm lever pull. And in the case of the aluminium and the forge levers, they barely moved at less than half a millimeter. But in the case of this continuous fiber mark forge part, it did deflect 1.7 millimeters. So in the real world, although this lever might not easily break, it would feel slightly spongy. So it probably wouldn't be an ideal application for it. Then we'll move on and have a look at our carbon filled nylon. So this is the sort of material that most FDM printers can print and it has very, very short strands. Now, whilst this might marginally improve the strength and the stiffness over a pure polymer, it certainly doesn't bring it into the realms of any of these other materials on test. And during this test, with less than 10 kilos applied, we had to end the test because it had already deflected 20 millimeters, which clearly means that it wouldn't be suitable for an application like this. The next test that we're going to look at is the flexural test. Now, in many regards, this is a similar test to the lever pull. The lever pull is a flexural test. This is just a more controlled three point bend. Now, unsurprisingly, the mechanical data that we've got from this or the yield points of these materials do mirror the lever pull test quite closely. But during this test, I also took the opportunity to measure the flexural modulus or the stiffness of the material. Now for this, I've just used the crosshead travel of the machine, which isn't quite as accurate as setting up a dedicated extensometer, but for the purposes of comparison should give us more than good enough data. So if we first take a look at the aluminium, this has a flexural modulus of 51.9 gigapascals, which is in the range of what we would expect from an alloy like this. The forged carbon, although this did exhibit much higher strength than the aluminium, it actually is slightly more flexible and has a flexural modulus of 35.5 GPA. We then have the optimized forged carbon where we have nearly all of the reinforcement running continuously from end to end. And this did provide the highest strength and stiffness of any of the materials on test. With a flexural modulus of 61.1, it does beat aluminium by a reasonable margin. We then have the Mark Forge continuous fiber placement. And just like in the lever pull test, this showed the lowest level of stiffness and has a flexural modulus of only 8.3. Now this will be affected by a limitation that you have with this process in that you can't place the continuous fibers right on the surface. It has to have a few layers of unreinforced material laid down first. So in effect in this test, we've been testing a thinner section of reinforcement, but I still think it's a fair comparison because this is a genuine limitation of the machine. So if you were to make this part, that is how it would have to perform. Then we have the onyx, which is the carbon filled nylon. And just like in the lever pull test, we found that this doesn't really sit in the same category as any of these other materials. In fact, it's so flexible that we did struggle to get any usable data. Finally, let's look at the results from our tensile test. Now this is where we're going to start seeing some of the results diverging, and we will possibly identify some of the limitations of a short strand forge process. So starting out looking at the aluminium, this actually yielded at 930 kilos, which is at the top end of what we would expect from a 6082T6 aluminium. I think possibly the reason for this improved performance or high level of performance is that this has been machined from an extruded aluminium profile. So it's likely that we'll have a degree of anastropic behavior that would be working in its favor. So let's now take a look at the forge carbon. This yielded at 588 kilos, which is a reasonable amount lower than the aluminium. I mean, it's still very good performance and weight for weight, it still beats aluminium, 
but it certainly shows some of the limitations of using a short randomly oriented fiber because when this is put under a purely tensile load, it has to transfer the strain from one of these short strands into the next one. And it does this through shear in the resin matrix. And it's this complex load transfer that means it is compromised in a purely tensile application. The best way that I could think to visually describe this is using a deck of cards. So if we consider each one of these cards to represent one of the chopped toes, we can lay these out in a randomly oriented way. And then to simulate the resin matrix, I'm just going to lightly spray tack these together. With these tacked together, you can see that we do have, flexurally, a reasonably stiff and stable laminate here. But if I put this under tension, it very quickly separates. And it's a very similar effect when we're working with forged carbon. And that's why, under tension, it doesn't perform as well as you might expect when you see the flexural results. Then we have our optimized forged carbon. Now this effectively is creating a unidirectional carbon fiber profile. We have continuous fibers running from end to end. And unsurprisingly, it does exhibit huge strength when put in a purely tensile application like this. And it did finally yield at nearly 2.7 tons, which puts it really in a different league to any of these other materials on test. Now, the failure point in this instance is actually at the tabs at the top and bottom, and we did multiple tests and it continued to fail there. And that's where we have some of the short strand chop toe material that's failing before this main span. So if that hadn't have failed first, this could have probably taken a significant amount more load. We then have the continuous filament mark forged. Now, this has a very similar setup that we have in our optimized forged in that we've got fibers running all the way down the length end to end and we're pulling on those. So it's really being loaded in its optimal condition here. And it didn't fail to impress in this regard. It actually outperformed aluminum and didn't fail until it had got 960 kilograms of load applied, which considering this has come off a 3D printer, I do think is very, very impressive. And finally, we have our Onyx carbon filled nylon. Finally, we've got a test that we've actually been able to get some actual data from. Um, not that it's particularly impressive, this failed at 89 kilograms of load. So it is a significant margin lower than any of the other materials on test once again. So that concludes our materials testing on forged carbon fiber. I hope that the information in this video has helped to give you a better understanding of the mechanical properties of this material and helped to illustrate that in the right application, it can not only mechanically outperform aluminium, but also do this around about half of the weight. If you are interested in learning more about this process, do go and check out our previous video where we go through the entire process in step-by-step -step detail. Of course, all of the materials required for the forged carbon process, along with a huge range of other composite materials, are available on the Easy Composites website. As ever, a huge thank you to all of our customers and subscribers for your support, and I'll see you next time. Of course, all of the equipment and materials that you've seen used in this video can be ordered online from the Easy Composites website. If you're based in the EU, you can now order directly from our Netherlands warehouse on easycomposites.eu, and for the UK and the rest of the world, please visit easycomposites.co.uk.